uh, if you haven't already, you will probably get some credit card applications, the banks, dozens of banks trying to get you to get a credit card. <coughs> the reason they will send it out to you at your age is that this is not meant as disrespect, it's, just, it's statistically backed up, data shows it. You guys are brain damage to you about 25 years of age. You're from, from the low, the part of your brain that allows you to think of the long term, and I'm not saying some of you don't. No, no, no. Just, I'm talking as a group, your age group, you have problems with thinking about the future. Okay, so they want you to get stuck early. It's like the same reason they try to get you guys to smoke early. You know, you're not thinking about, hey, when I'm 30 years of age, and I've got cancer, I'm missing a lung, and I got a hole in my throat. Uh, they're trying to get you hooked early while you're still young and not thinking about things. So they're going to they're going to try to get you to get credit cards. And credit cards are not bad. Okay, credit cards can be wonderful. They can be lifesavers, but they can also end you up being poor the rest of your life because credit cards are easy to use. It's not your money. Go out and spend it all you want. And then you max out your credit cards and you can't make you can never catch up on it. And then you can either declare bankruptcy and there's a few other options, but none of them are good. So credit cards can be great. They can also be bad. And so these are just a few options of credit cards. OK. Annual fees, something like um, American Express. They really don't do monthly fees. Because American Express, if you ever pay it, a credit card gets most of his money from the fact that you don't pay off the balance at the end of each month. You use it, use it, use it. And at the end of the month, I've spent too much. I don't have the money. I'm going to have to wait and pay off some more next month. They're going to charge you a fee on what you owe. Okay, the more you owe, the more they charge. On both of the ways they calculate it. We're going to talk about that today. American Express does not do that. American Express told me one with that. They specifically say you have to pay off your balance every month. So if you don't pay off your balance one month, they can't do your car. So they've got to get their money some way, and they do that by annual fees. They're going to charge you, whether you use your card or not, you're going to get charged a fee by American Express. Okay. Uh, some cards, they charge you more interest rates. When I was in you, when I was your age, uh, I didn't have a credit card, but my dad let me use his one, and my grandmother, 19 and a half, 20 percent interest was not uncommon back in the 80s. The interest rates gone down a little bit, but interest rates on credit cards, how much they charge you, is still a lot more than if you went to the bank and got a loan. Go to the bank and get a loan, you can get it three, four, five, ten percent. Credit cards easily. 15, 20%, and some are even higher, okay? Uh, so number A up here, all they're gonna charge you is 9.5% for whatever you have left over at the end of the month. That's all they're charging, which is not bad, really. Uh, credit card offer B, 60-day grace period. If I buy something now, they will not start charging me fees on that thing for two months. So if I pay it off in two months, I got no fees. But again, they're paying me, they're charging me $40 per, per year just to have that card. Uh, credit card offers, and it's on here too, by the way. Credit card offers C, I get frequent flyer miles for everything I use. Now, if I like to travel, if I want to go places, I can use those. I mean, who is it? Um, Brad Pitt's old wife. No, not Brad Pitt. Ben Affleck's old girlfriend, wife. Jennifer something or other. Uh, she adds that. She advertises that. What's in your wallet? Uh, frequent flyer miles. You build up enough of them. You don't have to have cash for free, free, for flying. You just use the frequent flyer miles. Uh, cash advances. I mentioned uh, the other day. I may have been in this class. I may have been in this I don't know. Uh, you, you spend too much on your credit card, so you use one credit card to get a cash advance to pay off the other credit card. Uh, Cash advances are like taking a borrowing, a loan. A lot of times they charge you a lot more for a cash advance than they do if you purchase. But in this one, number D, they're going to charge me the same as they would anything else. They're not going to charge me extra. Again, <clears throat> possible. 
Cashback. You do know that when you use a credit card, they're actually charging you more than if you pay cash. Um, they closed it now, but there's a gas station on North Sheridan Road. They they actually had on their sign uh, cash prices. You save three cents per gallon, which is not a lot, but if you you know if you fill up a big monster truck, that's a couple dollars. Okay, just for gas. So if you use a credit card, the prices are a lot of businesses are actually more expensive than if you use cash. Moody's German restaurant, they have it at their checkout. If you use plastic, we're using, we're charging you a fee. Okay, but on this one, what they do is they take that money that they're charging you and they turn around and pay 2% back to you. So again, these are all options. There's thousands of more out there. But they're asking you to make some assumptions and some guesses. So question number one, assume you want to use a credit card only for emergency. I'm not going to use it for anything. I'm putting it, I'm wrapping it in plastic, putting my freezer in a block of ice. The only time I'm going to use it if they're about to come take me and throw me out of the house. Which card offer is best for you? If you're never going to use it except for emergencies. Which one of your card options of these five is the best offer? What? It's a question. It's not as it's part of the why. You got to be able to defend it. Anybody? We have B on the table right now. Anybody got a better option? How about number A? If I put that card in the freezer and I don't touch it at all till it expires, I won't have to pay a nickel for it. Because they're not charging anything. The only time I have to pay for anything is if I have to use my car, and then they're only going to charge me extra if I don't pay it off at the end of the month. Okay, so A is probably the better idea. Now, I didn't mention this before, and I apologize. Before debit cards came out, I had a buddy I used to work with in Louisiana that he would use his credit card, and what he would do is he would never pay cash on anything. He would use his credit card on literally everything. And then you would get a bill from the credit card company that had everything you spent during the month. He would take that and he would pay off the entire balance every month. And then he would have a document of what he had spent. So when it came time for tax time, all you had to do is highlight the taxes, the taxable, the things that he could write off on income tax, and he had the document. So Again, if you pay it off every month, credit cards are great. So number one would probably be A, because you're not paying a nickel unless you actually physically use it. So that's your why. Number two, you plan to travel during summer vacations. Why might offer C, why would offer C be a good thing? I plan to do a lot of travel. Why is offer C a good thing? What? Frequent flyer miles. I don't have to come up with money from somewhere else. If I've used it, I can use some of that frequent flyer miles to fly places. Uh, if you number three, if you plan to use your card for all purchases, but pay the bill in full every month, which is the best card offer? You know, we already talked about maybe A, because I'm not being charged anything other than what I don't spend. Well, if I'm paying it off every month, basically I'm not paying anything. Okay. What other thing would be a good offer that you could use? We know A is probably a good idea. Anything else? One of the other cards might be a good idea if I'm paying it off every month and I'm using it for just cash. What? E? He would be probably a good one because I'm getting cash back, right? Okay. Uh, maybe D, because there's some places that will not take plastic, right? So not leaning towards that because I really don't like to, but they're going to charge you the same thing. So maybe D. But again, that's only if you got some place that will not accept plastic. And there's places like that. A lot of places, and again, your generation can do that. In my generation, you couldn't use it to pay your, your rent at your apartment complex. So you had to have a money order or a, or a check. 
So now, and they, because they didn't want cash and they wouldn't take plastic. So, so again, A would be a good one. B would be a halfway okay one. E would be a good one also. Okay. Again, it's higher interest rate, but as long as you're paying it back at the end of each month, it's not going to be an issue. Number four, last one. You live on a tight budget and worry about paying for things for which you cannot use a credit card, such as rent. Which card could help you? Again, you can't use plastic, but you got to use your credit card. Which one? Well, the only option is the cash advance of 70D. I can go get cash from the credit card. Again, is if you're if you're living on a shoestring budget and you don't have a lot of money, credit cards may not be the way to go. Because you got to pay them back sooner or later. So, again, first semester of class, we talk about budgeting. You may have to cut on your bills if you're, if you're that tight on your budget. Okay, anybody got any questions? Again, there are wrong answers, but they're very few and far between. As long as you can explain why you want to do it. At some point today, make sure this makes it to the basket. <laughs> 